In this segment, we're going to talk about the tendon optimizer, which is a rapid way of um, alleviating or taking care of issues relative to pre-compression, balance loading, and or allowable stresses. And it's an automated way to solve um, issues where we have overstress, uh, either top or bottom at mid-span or support, pre-compressive issues, and so on. So rather than doing that manually by modifying tendons, modifying drapes, modifying geometry, we can use the optimizer to narrow in on a um, on an area that might be insufficient more rapidly. And we're going to um, go back and you can see the results we saw in the um, previous segment. If we open the result display settings, we can see that the top support is overstressed, for example, on this span here, as well as the bottom support. And the bottom is overstressed uh, relative to an allowable 380. The top is overstressed relative to an allowable um, also of 380. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and open the optimizer from the tendon toolbar or the tendon ribbon. We'll select uh, tendon optimizer. Notice that the tendons become uh, yellow as their mid-handle becomes yellow, which means that they're allowed to be selected for optimization. In this case, we're going to be optimizing the span related to these two tendons, which in this, in this example will be this span here. And the program is going to create a virtual cut A, uh, B at mid-span. This is not quite shown there graphically, but it's at that location at mid-span, and then C. And um, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our settings for the optimization. So we're going to set up a tributary width. Uh, we're going to say that the end spans are going to be um, generated at 2% or 3% versus 5. 5 is too far away from the support, so we'll change that. We're going to set up our optimize, uh, optimizer settings, which are load to balance. Here we're going to select self-weight and dead load, pre-compression uh, pre range, and then load balance range. These are both taken from what we've already set um, in the setting up of the tendons in, in the segment uh, two segments ago. So we're going to optimize for service total load and the criteria here is a two-way slab. Uh, the program allows us to select which parameters we want to optimize for. So we're going to do pre-compression, load balancing, and stress. The next thing we're going to do is just select the tendons we want to optimize, which will be these two tendons here. We'll go ahead and select them. After selecting them, we can see that the, the tributary is actually taken as one half the distance to the adjacent tendon to the opposite side. So this tributary is not wide enough for what these two tendons are actually representing. So that's fine. We'll go ahead and select here. We're going to say this is really 30 foot tributary and we're going to use a 3% um, uh, 3 offset from the support. We'll say update and the program updates the uh, tributary for this particular optimization run. And you can see there's a um, uh, virtual design cut A. Or with A is actually at the bottom here, B is in the middle, and C is at the top. And the program will be optimizing the parameters at those particular locations for this set of tendons. The program will take um, account of what tendons are currently there, and here we have two tendons, um, tendon one and tendon two. The program notes the force per strand, the number of strands, and then also the CGS at this location for those tendons. And if we zoom in, we can see the program has shown us tendon one, tendon two, CGS is one and one. Um, total strands is eight per line, and the effective force is 27. If we go over to optimizer, we can see that the total force currently in this location is 432, um, 432 kips. And at that particular level of force, we meet the bottom end of pre-compression, which is actually what we had done initially when we, when we inserted these tendons manually. So the bottom end of pre-compression is 432 kips. If we were to meet 300 PSI pre-compression, we would need 864 kips. Um, the bottom end of load balancing is actually 865 kips, 
and the bottom end or the top end of load balancing is 1558. So our current force only meets minimum pre-compression. It technically doesn't even meet load balancing or allowable stress. The program is estimating that we need a force of 1061 kips, which is shown here and it's also reported here as the estimation, in order to meet load balancing and stress. And that is shown here. We, we would be acceptable with load balancing and stress, but not acceptable with pre-compression at this force range. Um, the pre-compressive stress would be about 368 if we were to increase the force to this amount. And that might be a decision that has to be made during the course of the design. The load balancing percentage um, is 61% at this force range or at this force level. And then we can see at the block below, uh, this is the stress check. So the current level of stress is about 20% over at section cut C. At mid-span, it's roughly 62% over. And if we increase the force here, we would um, meet the stresses based on what is shown here. So uh, we want to go ahead and propagate that change into the model. And in order to do that, we're going to take a look and see what has to happen. So we know that the upper span is fine. We actually talked in the previous um, segment about raising the CG for the upper span to control the load balancing. So in this case, we may want to actually add an add tendon, which is anchored here, and it's, it goes down towards the bottom and exits here. And we know that this is um, section cut A, this is B, and this is C. So we're going to anchor the tendon and use an add tendon option. Um, we'll go here to apply to model. Um, the distribution option means that we're going to distribute the delta, which is a total change of 630 kips, which is 23 total strands, and we would basically split this in half and add it to the two existing strands. But we don't want to do that because we don't want to add fours to the two spans above this one in question. So we're going to use new tendons. And we're going to start, um, we're going to add new tendons between tendons one and two. Those are the only two tendons currently in this, in this particular strip. We'll assume an effective force of 27 kips. We're going to create um, one tendon in between these two uh, current and existing tendons. The total change will be 629 kips. And this new tendon is going to basically have 23.31 um, strands associated to it. We're going to add partial tendons from section C, which is here, to the edge of the slab. And then we also designate a tail percentage on the backspan where that tendon might be anchored. I'll deselect the option to rerun the model, and then we'll go ahead and apply the tendon. And in doing so, we'll go ahead and close the optimizer. We can see that a new tendon has been added. That tendon is shown right here. I'm actually going to flip the um, stressing, so we'll go live dead. There's our dead end here. And this is the number of strands is 23.31. The shape is shown like so. And uh, the program then considers this tendon in the next run. Now, if we were to run the tendon and we were, or we were to run the model with this new tendon, keep in mind that when we use the optimizer, we optimize in isolation. We don't optimize relative to the finite element model or the finite element result. So um, when we rerun the uh, model with this new tendon, this force from this tendon is not confined only to this tributary. This force will disperse into the slab. So therefore, um, you need to optimize adjacent spans here if that's an issue and possibly here if that's an issue and also in these zones here and here. That way we get um, essentially confined locations where we have, uh, have added tendons and we have a concentration of the add tendon relative to the strip that it's supposed to be belonging to. So in other words, when we use the optimizer, it's usually a multi-cycle pass where we have to iterate down to a solution by optimizing more than just one span um, if needed. Um, so in this case, 
we have a force uh, or a stress of 919, and at the bottom we had a stress of roughly 530. And what we're going to do here is rerun the model and just show what the new stress is in this case. So we'll go ahead and go back to analyze. We're going to execute the analysis only for service total just to check the stresses. We'll select yes to, um, to save that result and I'm just going to go ahead and select this one strip and redesign that strip. So we'll go to floor design design the design sections, and look at the new result on this particular span. And I'll turn the tendons off. And we can see that the stress at this location actually went down to um, what looks like three, let's go ahead and just double click on this. Actually, I'm reduce the font height slightly. That should help us review the result. Okay, so the stress here is 384, the allowable is 379. So we cut it down from 930 down to 379 by adding those tendons. The stress at the top, has been satisfied. That was also overstressed. And then at the mid span, um, if I go back and check the bottom stress, this was previously 530. It's now 220 based on that additional force. However, if I check pre compression, pre compression again is a little high. It's 368. But these are again the decisions that have to be made during the course of the design. Um, the point was that uh, using the optimizer can be a much faster route to a feasible and a workable solution than just manually making modifications. This will conclude um, this particular segment and the tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.